Welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Melissa Wanish. In Ruby Snack number 21, I'll be showing you an example of how to contribute to open source with a feature ad. If you saw an earlier video where I go through different ways that you can contribute to open source, here are a couple of tips on feature builds. First, you need to make a suggestion and have a conversation with project administrators. Get the go ahead first. Write comprehensive tests and make sure all the current tests pass, not just the one you just wrote. And then of course, get feedback. Today, I'll be showing you a project that I worked on for a client in which I needed to update the API for Discourse. Discourse is a forum application. It's pretty awesome. You can check out the links for the different projects, the Discourse project there that you can use, or the one I actually contributed to was Discourse API. It is only about a year old and it has a lot of room for growth because all the endpoints to use Discourse have not been built yet. So I helped them out with one endpoint. The first thing I did, of course, was to check out the Discourse API and see any documentation it had about contributing. So I looked and said, okay, here's how you want to do it. Great. Um, and of course, you need to have Discourse up and running. That's important because it's working with Discourse. So now let's go ahead and look at the issues and create an issue. I'm going to start a conversation. So I just click on new issue and I say, you know what, I'm thinking about a feature where you can set the permissions for a category so you can have private categories. And this is something that wasn't in the API, something I couldn't just do from my app for the client I'm working for. So here's my suggestion. I'm going to make a set permissions method and we'll do it all there. So I submitted it, then I got some feedback, which was really great. And the feedback was like, well, hey, we actually don't have an update endpoint yet. Maybe you should work on that. And that actually led me to the point that, well, actually, I'd like to set the permissions when I create the category. So let's do that first. I'll definitely have to go back and help contribute to the edit method a little bit later. So now I need to fork the repository. Go ahead and make my own fork so that I can work on it to contribute. And here we need to clone the repository, get it all set up on my local environment. So we'll put it in a sites folder. I'm going to clone the discourse API. There it is. And now I'm going to CD into it and then let's open it up. Take a look. It opens it up in sublime for me. That's my chosen editor. Here we go. So you'll see there's a couple different folders, just like any, any gem. And what we need to go into is the lib folder. The gem, check out the discourse API. And then they put in another folder, API. Just look through and see. Okay, and here's one for categories. There we go. I'm sure we're going to need that, so I'll open it up. And then moving on down to spec, right? Because the next step is to definitely write that spec. So let's find one for categories. Here it is. So now we have those two open. So, but first let's go ahead and check to make sure all the specs are running now. So first I need to have discourse running. Okay. Because the discourse API is going to communicate with discourse. So I have that up and running that actually requires a Redis server and sidekick. So I have those up and running as well. Now back to the API says right here how to run the specs. So let me go back and run the specs just to make sure they're working before I take a stab at it. And oh, <laughs> rule number one of cloning, you have to bundle. So let's go ahead and bundle install. There are a couple of gems I was missing that it's using, so it'll run through these pretty quickly. And I sped it up for time's sake. Let's try running those specs again. And yes, they do pass. Now it's ready for me to start writing my own spec. Now I will create a new branch so that I can make the pull request to that particular branch. So I'll get checkout dash B and let's call it something like add permissions to create category. There we go. So now we're in the branch. 
let's go ahead and check out the actual discourse app to see how it is creating those permissions. And I like to go ahead and do that on GitHub. It's a little bit easier, I think, than going through my text editor to find what I want and I can hit the back button. So here we are, we're in category model. There's a method right there, apply permissions. So let's uh, check that out, see where it is in the file. I just did a control F to find that and then we'll go down directly there so I can look at the method and the other methods that it's calling because the note I got from the other contributor was, you know, you might want to make sure that it's removing permissions for everyone when you do it. And I saw that looking through this, yes, that's part of the discourse method is to restrict the access for everyone. So now I'm going to look right at categories and the controller and see, okay, so this is happening when you create it. So let me find information about creating or updating what the params might be. So here we have the category params and oh, let's, working on permissions right there. If the permissions are present, then I was looking for keys. All right, so that was a huge clue. So I went and looked up keys for the hang and saw exactly the syntax for how to feed in the hash for the keys the params are going to look at to make it work. Back in my text editor, let's go ahead and put in the spec that will check for the creation of a category. Now, to be honest, it did take me a couple of tries writing this spec and working with the code. I went to Rails C, I did a couple of tests. It took me a little bit, but here is the code that worked. So it's looking for response that has these permissions right there. That's the main thing that I'm adding. And of course, I'm testing the other things as well. There are a couple of required attributes for a category, like color and title, put in a description, that's optional. But we want the response to be a hash so that we know that it's communicating with discourse. So let's run that spec and it, and it passes right away even though I added something about permissions and permissions actually aren't in the code yet. So let's go ahead to the category module, add an optional part that is for permission. I also added a note to make sure that everyone understood that permissions it is a hash with the group name, not group ID, and the permission level, which is one, two, or three, depending on how much access you wanna give that group to that category. Now I'm going to run the spec again with my updated method to include permissions to make sure it passes and it does, hooray. Next up is to commit my changes. So let's see, get status. Yep, just the two files that I wanted to change. Now let's get add both of them and get commit. Gonna go ahead and just leave it there so that it opens the text editor because I have a fairly lengthy description. You need to explain yourself and really explain why I'm adding this feature. It, it helps getting it merged a lot more quickly so that everyone knows what you're doing. So let's just make this a little prettier. And there we go. So we'll close that and the commit happens. And now let's push it. Let's push it up to my branch add permissions to create category, and it's done. The next step is to make that pull request. So I had to make it pretty again. And now let's push that lovely green button. It makes me a little nervous, but it's done. And actually it only took a couple of minutes. They were really responsive and they went ahead and merged in my contribution, which was really exciting. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Ruby Snacks. If you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel, go ahead and click on that big red button right there. You get the episode just a few minutes before everyone else. If you have any questions about the process of contributing to open source, feel free to leave a comment below. If you are not already on my mailing list, head on over to rubythursday.com to sign up to get more Ruby Thursday awesomeness in your inbox. Hope you all have a great day and see you soon.